look at that for MRI in 30 minutes, and she's our coach and professor of state. It's not my fault. Well, I see that see that taking place. I think uh, 
more and more as more and more people are vaccinated and we get to a better place uh, health-wise that we'll be able to open the church back up uh, even a little bit more. So let's pray for that to happen. <clears throat> One thing I do want to announce to you, uh, I wish I had better news, but uh, it's getting a lot better. And uh, Sunday school class been meeting in Williams Hall. We've been anticipating our new air, heat and air unit for some time. We do have it. It is installed. Uh, it's about 90% complete. Uh, they still have to do some hooking up. There were some issues with the, uh, the way that the old unit was installed, and so they had to sort of work around those issues and go get some additional parts that they had not anticipated. So it's here, it's up, uh, it's installed, but it is not currently hooked up. And so by next week, that uh, job will be complete. Are there any other announcements this morning? All right, well, let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, you are worthy of all our praise. And we know, Lord, that uh, you never fail to keep your promises. We want to thank you that in Jesus' life, his resurrection, that we're able to see your love, your justice, your mercy, and, and celebrate that victory. And you are the God who lifts up those who are weighed down. You're the God who provides for those that you love. Our desire is to praise you as long as we live. So we would ask, Lord, today as we gather for worship that you would inhabit our praise. And we offer all of our prayers to you in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.
historic confession of the Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Last week, uh, we mentioned that Pam would be going in for a procedure uh, on her arm. She had that procedure, and uh, everything looks good. They said it was a zero-stage uh, melanoma, and so we're praising God for that. And uh, So now she's healing from that uh, surgical in incision, but that looks pretty good. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we also... Uh, got word, or I guess it was last week actually, that it's our best friends that uh, we get together with quite frequently, uh, Jerry and Debbie Abfell from Covington. Pam was talking to Debbie on the phone on Tuesday, and something just seemed a little off. She said, I'm going to need to call you back. She described her symptoms, and it sounded remarkably like she was having a stroke. As a matter of fact, later on, when she went to the hospital and they did all of their tests, they diagnosed her with a mild stroke. Uh, she's home now, uh, recovering and seems to be doing very well, but we would appreciate your prayers for Debbie Atfill and, of course, her husband, Jerry, as well. Uh, be in prayer for Reverend Amanda Westmoreland. She prepares to close out her ministry in Adamsville in preparation to come to Millington. I had a good conversation with her last week, and she's very, very excited about it. <coughs> Be in prayer for Pam and I, too, as we prepare to begin closing out our ministry here and uh, making preparations to go to uh, my first United Methodist Church. Are there any other joys, concerns you'd like to lift up to us today? <coughs> yes, Sam. Discontinued prayers for my sister Ruth. Remember youth, uh, Ruth Young, please. Others? Let's continue to pray for the uh, Collierville United Methodist Church. It's, they're no doubt struggling and still grieving. Okay, well, let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, we just want to come to you today giving you thanks. For this day, the blessings that have come with it, Lord, we know that uh, your love just endures forever. Your love has never failed. There are a lot of ways in which I know I've failed, we've failed, but we know that we have not surpassed the supply of your mercy and grace. We thank you for revealing yourself to us through your word. And as we open the Bible today, we pray that we would hear your voice, and we ask that your Holy Spirit would be at work, opening our ears and our hearts to receive your word. May we be transformed into your likeness. <clears throat> Lord, we pray for all of those who are dealing with economic challenges, job loss, especially various issues of health. We pray for those still working hard to arrest the coronavirus. And we pray that the vaccination process continues to go as smoothly as possible. We pray for our church that we might rise above the challenges that confront us and continue to move forward in, in ministry to our members, to our community. 
We pray for Reverend Westmoreland as she prepares to come to Millington and for Pam and I as we prepare to go to mine. And Lord, we offer these and all of our prayers to you in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning we want to share with you a passage of scripture in uh, Acts, the third chapter. We'll be reading verses 12 through 19. <clears throat> Acts 3, 12 through 19. Hear the word of the Lord. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God glorified what he had foretold through all the prophets, that the Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, when you read this particular passage of Scripture, you actually have to go back a little earlier uh, to find out really what's happening. Because what exactly is Peter talking about here as he's addressing uh, these rulers? And uh, <clears throat> what has happened is Peter and John are on their way to the temple for prayer. And when they get to the gate called Beautiful, one of the main entrances into uh, Old Jerusalem, there's a man who has been uh, laid there by his friends. He's been coming there for quite some time. Everybody knows him. Everybody sees him. And as Peter and John are entering into the, the city, the man looks up at them, and he just makes a simple request. Alms, would you give me something? And, of course, Peter looks down at him. He essentially says, hey, look, buddy, I don't have two dimes to rub together. But what I do have, well, that, that's what I'll give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And that's what happened. The man stood up. He began walking. And, you know, when I was a kid growing up at, at Lake Shore, as, as a little kid, <clears throat> they used to have us do this little song and dance. And I, I still remember it to this day. Most of it, one line kind of gives me a little trouble. But I'm going to do it for you. It's called Silver and Gold. Maybe you've heard this. But it goes something like this. Peter and John went to pray. They met a lame man on the way. When he held out his Hand for alms. This is what Peter did say. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. 
And he went walking and leaping and praising God. Walking and leaping and praising God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Well, you don't have to leave. I mean, no. Yeah, okay. If it didn't, didn't make you emotionally upset or whatever. Yeah, it, that, that's a little song, but it's a, it's a perfect testimony of what happened here. And, you know, I was thinking about maybe inviting you to stand up and join me. And then I got to thinking as I looked out, well, I'd probably have to be called on like Peter to administer a lot of miracles. But anyway. It was a lot of fun when we did that, walking, leaping, praising. I mean, we were just, you know, we were too dumb to know that the counselors were actually trying to wear us out. <laughs> and so we'd go to bed and go to sleep. We just thought we was having fun. Well, the next part of the story. You know, we typically, when we, when we talk about Peter, you know, we did a series on this about three years ago or so. And we, we like to think that sometimes when Peter opens his mouth, that he gets himself into trouble. And, and he does that a lot of times. I mean, you know, uh, he, he confesses that Jesus is the Messiah. Next thing you know, after Jesus has explained what's going to happen with the Messiah, Peter rebukes him and rejects that notion. Has to be sort of quieted down. Peter is with Jesus right before Jesus is carried away. Even in, if I have to die, I will never die. I mean, you know, we, we hear things from Peter. We think, oh, gosh, you know, he's opened his mouth. He's done it. But I think we, we need, in fairness, to remember that sometimes when Peter opens his mouth, these golden words just kind of roll out. And, and, and he gets it right. And man, when he gets it right, I mean... Miracles happen. Great things happen. And I'm thinking, uh, we go back earlier in Acts, where Pentecost has happened, and, and the Spirit has descended like the Scripture says, cloven tongues of fire on the followers of Jesus. They're down there, they're talking to everybody in their own language and all of that. And people are saying, what's wrong with these people? They're crazy, they're drunk, what is it? Peter stands before the crowd, he starts preaching. You remember what the Scripture said? 3,000 people that day. Surrendered their lives to Christ. Now, I don't see much wrong with that. So sometimes when Peter opens his mouth, he really kind of gets it right, too. And it's sort of the same way here, uh, because Peter has just, uh, you know, invoked the name of Jesus, and a miracle of healing has come upon this lame man. So that now he's getting up, he's walking, he's running, he's leaping. He's, he's really experienced a, a miraculous thing here. You know, to me, this is a huge miracle. It's, it, 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 it's huge. And let me explain why I'm saying that. Because, you know, people who have been injured, particularly in their lower extremities, maybe a back injury, maybe leg injury or something like that, and what they tell us is that during the physical therapy, that it, it's really hard sometimes to uh, relearn how to walk. You've got to get your balance. You've got to get your dexterity right. You have to work those muscles so that you don't collapse sort of under your own weight. Uh, you have to learn how to put those feet one in front of the other. You just have to kind of learn all that all over again. And it's challenging, and, it, and it's not easy, and a lot of times you need the support of something on either side of you or someone holding you up. But think about it. This is always amazing. Here's a man who has never taken a step. He's seen others walking, rather than walk by him every day, but he's never actually taken a step himself. And now here comes Peter. He says, hey, man, I don't have any money for what I got. I'm going to give you in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And that's exactly what he did. I mean, he stood up and, and he not only walked, he ran, he leaped, he jumped, he shouted. All of his 
his uh, muscles, these these synapses from his from his brain to his lower extremities just fired up. His muscles gathered strength in his thighs, his calves, his shin muscles, all the way down, and and he he immediately had that dexterity to to feel that balance underneath him. Everything worked. To me, this miracle is huge. And along with the physical healing also came this perfect dexterity. I think for something like that, we should all be pretty amazed. Well, you see, and so were those standing around who had just witnessed this miracle. They'd never seen anything like this before. They knew this guy had been here probably all of his life. And, and now this same man is, is getting up and, and walking around a couple of chapters uh, from chapter 3 there's some long conversations between Peter and the religious rulers about just exactly what had happened even with this man himself so they're standing around they watch this and, and then they ask the question they look at Peter and they say how did you do this it, you know, you know me, and you know sometimes I take liberties with the scripture. And so it's not written here, but if, if you look at the scripture and you look past Peter to John, I, I think you could kind of see John kind of lower his head and mumble to himself, oh boy, here he goes. It's on now. And Peter says, well, you know, since you asked. And as a friend of mine used to say, then he looked at those religious leaders and gave them a pretty good horse cussing. One Easter, uh, no, one Easter, the last Easter a few weeks ago, you remember my sermon, I asked these questions. Did God get it wrong? You know, when Jesus was being mocked, he was being cursed, he was being uh, beaten and eventually taken out to be hung on the cross. The question has to be asked, did God get it wrong? And then when we look at our own condition, which comes with human frailties of all kinds, whether it be uh, sickness, family pressures, economic challenges, uh, relationship issues, on and on, you know, the, the, the list goes on and on. We have to ask ourselves then, too, did God get it wrong? And so when we think of the disciples hiding out in the upper room, trying to protect themselves if, if the Jewish leaders were so intent on getting Jesus that they were able to bring about his crucifixion on the cross, what are they going to do to them? We need to, to go underground. We need to go undercover and protect ourselves. And then Jesus appears in the room with them. And then tells them to go out, continue the mission, heal, save people, help them to transform their lives, come into relationship with God, get on a better path for their life. And so the question was, did, did anything good come from the resurrection? And based on the day of Pentecost, and now Peter healing this man who had been lame all of his life at the beautiful gate. I think we can safely say yes, it did. So what is your idea of what God can do in your life? I mean, what, what do you see there? I believe the launching point for all of us is the same. And Peter says it right here in the scripture. In the name of Jesus. Because you see, without Jesus, you can receive a cure. You can receive the greatest job prom uh, promotion. You can celebrate, celebrate the promotion of your children. But you know, there will always be an emptiness in our lives, no matter what's happening around us, that only Jesus can fill. Peter told the lame man, 
look, I'm sorry, I don't have any silver, I don't have any gold, but I do have something I think that's going to change your life, change your world. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And did you notice that this man immediately got up, he went running, he went leaping, and the scripture says praising God. He left behind his collection cup, his, his money bag perhaps. Left it all there, went running and leaping. Because he had something now that no one else had ever been able to give him. And that was Jesus. You know, when other people had walked by him day after day, year after year, they gave them what they had. They gave them a little bit of money, perhaps gave him a little food, maybe a, a blanket or something else that they felt like could, could easily ease this man's suffering. <clears throat> but Peter's approach is different. And he says it, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. You know, it's evident here that everybody else that passed by that man could not give him what they didn't have. And I think it's important as ever for the church to recover the attributes of Jesus because if we're to bring healing and transformation into the world, we can't give what we don't have. I mean, if you're attempting to model peace with justice and, dem and, and demonstrate equality for all, but you do it apart from invoking the name of Jesus, I believe it's always going to fall a little short, fall a little flat. Peter is telling the religious leaders here, and, and really in no uncertain terms, you saw how he started out that, that scripture and he says, look, this Jesus, whom you took, whom you put in some kind of trial, whom you mocked, whom you cursed, whom you beat, and whom you traded him for a, a, an insurrectionist murdering guy named Barabbas, this, this same Jesus, without him, even in your best efforts to try to lead the people back into a relationship with God, however you're trying to do it, it's not going to work. It's always going to fall a little flat. Well, okay. So, Brother Ronnie, are you saying that just invoking the name of Jesus can bring about real change? It seems... A little oversimplified, doesn't it? Well, I, I suppose it does. One of my favorite stories when I was growing up, and I got to see this firsthand, because <clears throat> my dad was pastoring uh, a, a little charge up in northwest Tennessee. He had a, in, in one of his churches, he had a, a couple there. They were retirement age or so named the Stanfields, if I'm not mistaken. I think the man's name was Gordon. I can't remember for sure, but I think it may have been. But anyway, uh, his wife, Miss Stanfield, devoted, devout Christian. And every Sunday at church, did everything around the church that she could possibly do. It was just one of those living saints, you know. <clears throat> While Mr. Stanfield was just the opposite of that. I mean, he was known to, to gamble away a lot of money, uh, uh, used abusive language. I think at some point he may have even been a bit abusive to her. And Christmas and Easter may come to the church, but my dad took the opportunity to share with him uh, his need to accept Christ at some point in time. Well, Mr. Stanfield heard it, but you know, it just never settled. I think my dad was at that charge for about four years. And finally, in like maybe year two or three, I don't remember, for whatever reason, in one of these testimonies, conversations that he was having with my dad, it stuck. It, it, 
it got through the door. And, and immediately, <clears throat> Mr. Stanfield knelt down, gave his life to Christ. And there was such a transformation in this man's life. He, he went around telling everybody he knew about how Jesus had changed his life. And he was a different person. And he would help them if, if, if they needed it. And I remember the, the story I love. He called my dad one night. It was maybe 10 o'clock at night. He said, i got to share this story with you. <clears throat> and he was trying to call somebody, I don't know, a business related. Just, uh, I don't know. But anyway, in his attempt to call this person, he got the wrong number. And there was a young lady on the other end of the phone. And he said, can I speak to such and such? Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, you probably have the wrong number. There's nobody here by that name. And, and Gordon just heard something in her voice that seemed a little off. And so he, he just asked her. He said, Miss, are you okay? You sound a little down. And I don't know what it was, but I, apparently she just felt that there was something about this man that she could trust. And she began to share her story with him. That she and her husband had not been married for very long, but they had already began experiencing uh, some marital issues. And there were uh, relationship issues. And they knew they weren't the kind of people that they needed to be, but they didn't know what they were going to do. They were contemplating divorce already after just a short time of being married. And Gordon says this. He says, listen. I've got some time. I'm not doing Could I just come over and talk to you and your husband? So she told him where they lived, and he drove over, and he introduced himself to the young man, introduced himself to the young lady, went in the house, and he started talking to them. And he told them how that his life was a wreck and a mess. But Jesus had changed all that. And he believed that Jesus could do the same thing for them. And they believed him. And so right there in front of their couch, they turned around, they knelt down. And in just a few minutes, they had given their life to Jesus. The last time I heard was been years and years ago, decades ago. They were still in the church. This young couple was still in the church, still celebrating their faith. And they had sort of adopted Mr. and Miss Stanfield as, as sort of their surrogate parents. Their spiritual mentors. Can invoking the name of Jesus change? People. I believe it can. But now you know me. And you know that a lot of times I'm a pragmatist. Sometimes I overthink things. You know that. And so I know that by just invoking the name of Jesus, that most likely we're not going to see clouds part. We're not going to see mountains crumble into the sea. But the other thing I always know is that evil is not going to benefit from it either. Injustice, equality, fairness for the least of these, and the oneness that we seek for our culture and society. I don't believe it's going to happen without Jesus being in the midst of it all. I remember one pastor reminding me and others that uh, when life is at its darkest. That's when the light of Christ shines the brightest. When Jesus left his disciples and followers, he left with them a very powerful gift. And that was the gift of his name. And think of this. Names in biblical times really meant something. It was a reflection of that person. You know what Jesus' name is, Yeshua, which is the Old Testament prophet's name, Joshua. That's what Jesus' name was. Jesus is the Greek rendering of the Hebrew Joshua. And what does his name mean? His name literally means God is our salvation. Jesus told us in the scripture if in my name you ask anything, then I will do it. The name of Jesus is not 
to be trifled with. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. It brought healing. It brought salvation. It transformed entire cultures. It can once again empower the church to be the presence of Christ in a world that seeks to have its wounds healed and its dignity restored. I submit to you that any time we need to have our lives changed and empowered or find the strength to overcome the challenges of life, then we can take a page from the scripture and invoke the name of Jesus. Because the name of Jesus is that healing balm, if you will, that we all need. Me personally. Perhaps yourself. The, the, the whole church. We need that. To deal with the pressures of life. To bring about the kind of change that God wants to see in the world today. So my advice to us, very simply, why don't we give it a try? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn this afternoon or this morning is Hymn of Promise. Let's sing all three verses. Would you please stand if you're able?